Well, if you're uh, anything like me and want to indulge your fantasy of Anson Mount's Captain Pike riding a horse, I've got a book for you. Hello interwebs, I hope you're all doing well and I hope you're excited because I am extremely excited because it's time for me to return to my favorite corner of my favorite science fiction universe, the Star Trek universe, because we have yet another release in the Star Trek book universe and so I get to review another Star Trek book, this time Star Trek Strange New Worlds The High Frontier by one John Jackson Miller. Now this is a, a kind of an extra special uh, exciting book to be discussing because not only is it a new book in the Star Trek line, uh, which has been a little while in coming because this book along with a few other Star Trek novels have been recently delayed due to printing issues and you know supply chains uh, problems that have been going on the past year or so so we've been waiting for this one for a while but this is also the first book in the Star Trek Strange New Worlds line so we have a new Star Trek show Strange New Worlds it just had its first season a little uh, while ago a few months ago um, and then this is the first book in that uh, sort of like line of novels that will probably be uh, numerous to come after this point uh, that we get. And so the first novel in any sort of range of Star Trek novels is usually one that they try to put a lot of focus and attention to. Uh, I remember specifically like Star Trek Picard, Una McCormick had that novel, The Last Best Hope, which was a prequel to that series that was given a big push because it was sort of like the behind the scenes of what was leading into that first season of that show. And honestly, in my opinion, was uh, better than the entire first season of Picard by itself, which to be fair, in some people's minds, isn't saying much. I actually think that all of the Star Trek Picard novels have been generally better than uh, at least the first two seasons. Um, but regardless, they put a lot of high quality into these first books as I hope they do every Star Trek book. Uh, but in specific, I was really pumped for this one. Also, I am uh, really excited because this is one by John Jackson Miller, who has written a bunch of Star Wars and Star Trek uh, novels as well as many on his own. Uh, and he has actually been a recurring favorite of mine in the Star Trek lit verse. Uh, the last Star Trek book that he wrote was Star Trek Rogue Elements, was the which was the Cristobal Rios Star Trek Picard novel, and I thought that was uh, an absolutely beautiful novel. I, I gave it uh, one of my highest uh, reviews that I've given uh, for a Star Trek novel, uh, which is saying something because uh, Una McCormick is generally my favorite uh, Star Trek author, and I think that's still the case, but John Jackson Miller's right up there, and uh, getting into it, uh, this book is no different. I had such a fun time with uh, The High Frontier, because it does so many kind of really cool and exciting things within the novel uh, and does one particular thing that my little uh, NX-01 Star Trek Enterprise love and heart uh, was really, really pumped about. Uh, so let's get into kind of discussing the specifics of this one. This novel, uh, without getting too much into the plot of the book just yet, and I'll, I'll, I'll sort of, you know, try to keep things vague for now, and I won't go spoiler spoilery in this review, but I'll sort of mention some more specifics as we go through it. But uh, just to sort of stay generalized, first and foremost, I will say this book captured, and I mean absolutely captured the feel of a Strange New World episode, so much so that honestly it feels like a, a missing episode of the first season in some ways. Uh, this book takes place right between two episodes uh, of season one. Uh, specifically it takes place almost right before the episode where, uh, without spoiling too much, it's the sort of high fantasy uh, episode that focused on Dr. Mbenga. And what I love about it is what Strange New Worlds did so well throughout its first season was tell very individualized stories that uh, like felt like you could watch an episode and feel like you got a complete tale, and yet there were also ongoing character arcs that were going throughout the season, such as with Dr. Mbenga and uh, some of the mysteries surrounding his character, or uh, characters like Uhura, uh, sort of her journey throughout the season, Captain Pike as well. Like You got like development of the characters' journeys throughout the entire season, even even while we were telling individual stories. And the fact that this book takes place very specifically between two very distinct episodes of the show means that it, it is actually fitting into those characters' arcs and where they are at. So you'll get little uh, moments of callbacks to like where Dr. Mbenga is sort of dealing with uh, stuff relating to the uh, arc and mystery surrounding what was going on with him. Again, I'm kind of staying spoiler free because if you haven't seen Strange New Worlds, I don't want to ruin things for you. Uh, but you also get like references to Uhura's character where throughout that first season you know she's still a cadet uh, but she is learning to be more integrated into the crew and you get to see that the crew members have started to trust her a little bit more than they have when like by episode two where she was still a fresh-faced cadet and people hadn't really gotten to know her and she was a little bit more uh, in, on, in, not as confident in her own abilities there uh, and we also get things like references to the episodes that happened before like there was the um, the episode that was very much referencing uh, the ones who walk away 
away from Omilaz. I'm forgetting the title of the episode. Uh, but it, that episode is referenced here, and it comes up in terms of Captain Pike's motivations through some of the decisions that he's feeling uh, as he's going through this story. So I have to commend this book very much, especially since more than likely, and I, I spoke to John Jackson Miller briefly when he was at Emerald City Comic Con. I actually got him to, to sign the book. Uh, in here. He, he did a nice little sign in for me. He started writing this book uh, before the show was even, I, I think, even filming potentially. Uh, so he, he manages to make this feel like very much a part of that and and make references to like feelings and, and like character developments within the show in I think a very, very fun way that just makes it feel like it just slots right in there. Um, but beyond that, I think one of the more fun things that this book is able to do beyond what a Strange New Worlds episode is able to do is it feels uh, grand and epic in scale. The story that is presented here is, is, um, very much takes place on a single planet. You know, we're not jumping from planet to planet, jumping around the galaxy sort of thing. It is a very, like, we see, we saw a single strange new world. Uh, but that planet is incredibly well developed. You know, generally when we visit planets in Star Trek, there are, like, you go to a planet and it is, you know, one culture, one society, uh, and it's sort of like the entire planet is this thing. Uh, it's sometimes even galaxy-spanning civilizations can be that, the sort of monocultural idea within Star Trek. But here, this planet uh, feels incredibly well developed. And I don't want to spoil too much about what I mean by that, because part of the fun of it is kind of seeing how this world unfolds, especially in the early parts of the novel. Um, but it, it is a fully fleshed out society that is uh, very unique and has different cultures within it. And it was just really cool to see that develop throughout the novel. And it, it also, what lends more to the epic feel of the book, and I, I actually spoke to John Jackson Miller about this uh, when I uh, talked to him at the Comic-Con, is that... Um, there are maps within the novel. There's some bigger ones later on. Like, it starts small, and then as you go through the book, you'll find other maps, if I can see if I can find it here, uh, that will sort of show, like, the pull out and show you more of the planet that they're on as you go through and sort of expand out. And uh, he, uh, John Jackson Miller actually wasn't originally planning to uh, put those maps in, but uh, when the, uh, the delay of the book happened, he was able to say, screw it, I'll add those maps in because it'll sort of, like, add to the epic nature of it. And it really does. It really makes this book feel like something uh, grander in scale than um, than like your typical Star Trek novel, even though in many ways it can be considered smaller because we're only visiting one planet. And I, that sort of grand adventure feel, I think, really makes it work well. And the other thing, too, that is sort of implied by the name The High Country uh, here is it also kind of has a, a Western feel, like Man on the Frontier uh, sort of feel for it, especially with the character of Captain Pike. You know, he gets down on this planet and... And uh, again, without spoiling too much, there's very much like cut off from technology, man sort of figuring his way through this society. He gets to ride a horse and all that jazz. So there's that sort of like grand high adventure stuff that you get to see. Now that being said, that does not mean that it's like you know, eschewing all the Star Trek-isms and things like that. Like there is very much a science fiction mystery that is going on here, but it's also sort of very much mixed in even more so than a typical, typical Star Trek episode with that sort of Western aesthetic. Now, to, uh, without spoiling too much again, but I'll get a little bit more specific here. One of the other cool things that, for me, again, as a Enterprise fan, Star Trek Enterprise fan, uh, that I liked about this novel, it is that is that it is a kind of pseudo-sequel to uh, an episode of Star Trek Enterprise uh, that uh, I found to be one of the worst episodes of that show. Uh, that uh, It was a really bad one uh, for some very specific reasons. And this book actually kind of makes it a sequel to that episode and actually fixes some of the problems that I had with some of the implications of that specific episode. So, uh, again, I won't spoil too much, but I, I really love uh, when Star Trek novels do that, where they, number one, t are a sequel to, uh, like, a weird niche section of uh, Star Trek lore, but then, even better, like, can take it and develop it in a way that it sort of improves upon it. Um, I, I'm thinking of, like, even John Jackson Miller did this uh, with his last novel, Rogue Elements, where he sort of took the people from uh, the uh, Star Trek original series episode, A Piece of the Action, and developed them in a much more intriguing way than they uh, had been left at the end of that episode. Uh, so so, uh, John Jackson Miller is sort of, like, very, like, excited to do that sort of work of take a weird part of Star Trek lore and expand upon it. Um, so I think that this does that very, very well. Um, 
Some other things too, there are some cool characters in here. Uh, some of the characters that we get to meet are very endearing and fun uh, and, and they're kind of like adorable in many ways. And the other thing that I like about too is that, that while there are antagonists in this book, you know, things don't feel like, oh, there's a big evil sort of thing. Like there are problems, there are people who are, you know, doing, you know, maybe malicious things. Um, but it, it, it is more rooted in just solving the mystery and sort of working out issues, which I think is, is a very Star Trekian uh, sort of way to go about this. Um, so uh, I think that's pretty much everything that I have to say staying spoiler free on this book. This was a lot of fun. I had a, a very great time with it. If you're like looking for something to satiate your Strange New Worlds desire for like another episode of that show while you're waiting for season two, or you're just looking for a fun time in Star Trek, or you want like a sort of high adventure Western kind of feel with your Star Trek novels, um, this is the one for you. This is just a, a, a sort of very fun adventure with a crew that I really happen to enjoy, you know, as opposed to something like Una McCormick's work, which is, she's my favorite author, where, like, she is very much very didactically political in a lot of her novels, uh, sometimes, sometimes in dark ways. Um, this is just a much more adventurous one. Uh, but, you know, that's why I love Star Trek. It, it can have that diversity in its storytelling. Um, so yeah! Great uh, book for Strange New World fans. I'd love to hear your thoughts, though. Have you read uh, this book in the uh, the Star Trek novelverse? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please, if you can, go out and support the authors um, because, you know, the only way we get more Star Trek novels is if you support the authors, buy the books, things like that. So if you can, um, go support them because... I, I want more Star Trek novels. It's, I'm just I'm just gonna say it. I want more Star Trek books. It's my favorite part of the Star Trek universe besides maybe Lower Decks at this point. Um, again, no shade at any other Star Trek show. I love them, but I just, I love the Star Trek books. They're my favorite. They're my favorite. Um, with all that said, thank you so much for joining me, everyone. I hope you all live long and prosper.